Hello, it's Nick as you can see. So this vlog is a bit of a reality check actually because I think I think women in general are surrounded by some really demanding, challenging and harsh narratives about what we need to be, how much we need to achieve, how much we need to balance. And I think when we enter the menopause, the wheels just fall off because we just don't have, well, we, sorry, I can't speak on behalf of everybody, but my experience is you just don't have either the energy, the motivation, or the giving a shit to do it. So here I am, um, as you can see, a little bit, um, a little bit ready. So I've still got, look, my dirty apron, glass of wine, ovs, and um, yeah, hair that hasn't been washed for a couple of days. <laughs> and I guess I wanted to do a reality check because I think when we go online and we are surrounded by so many messages of what we should do, everything we should eat, all the exercises we should do, the daily routines, getting up early, God knows, I, you know, I, I mean, the list, could, I could just do a 20 minute vlog on all of the things that we should do, right, to age well, stay healthy, etc, etc, be beautiful, be sexy, be successful, all of that. And I think it can be really overwhelming. And I know for sure that it can certainly make me feel shit and inadequate and a bit of a failure if I allow it to, if I buy into that optical illusion. And it is an optical illusion because if you stop in the street and you speak to any woman, whether they be middle-aged or not, I think we're all a bit overwhelmed by it, right? So I... Um, I think it's important that we share the reality and we just ground ourselves and bring it back to what really matters. So where do I start? Um, menopausal, 52 years old, been in the menopause, men the little, 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 menopause for about six years. Um, life's changed quite significantly, can no longer hold down a professional 40 odd hour a week job because I'm, I'm just too knackered, brain fog's quite difficult don't have the motivation, don't want to, that, that's the bottom line, don't want to. Married, three children, all teenagers, um, gorgeous, delightful husband, don't tell him, you might think I like him. Um, uh, living a bit of the good life, we live in the countryside, we really like um, being very grounded, back to nature. We often say even if we won the lottery tomorrow, we probably wouldn't change where we were living, we might go on a few more holidays and I might buy that beautiful oak bed I've been eyeing up that I can't afford but that's probably about it and so today um I for many many years it might be I don't know if it's helpful or not but you know what if it's not helpful just switch me off if I'm annoying you just don't fucking listen to me don't listen to people on social media that annoy you right just stop you don't have to just stop go and do something else if this is helping then fantastic um for many years I don't know 20 25 years um I was um a management consultant, very ferocious, very competitive, very motivated, um, all of that jazz, all of those things that tick the box. Um, met my husband while I was, uh, I met him at work. Um, we got married, we had kids. Even when I was having kids, I was building a business. You know, I wasn't taking maternity leave. I was blah, 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 blah. All, all sounds a bit bollocksy now, to be honest. But anyway, that was me then after my third child got postnatal depression I think the wheels were falling off before then really I was just trying to ignore it um and even then you know when I stopped being a professional so to speak in terms of a management consultant you know I was always trying to do something to kind of um give me a label some identification some sense of meaning some sense of who I was because being a stay-at-home mum and um, a housewife and a homemaker, I know people don't like the word housewife, apologies. Um, actually, no, I'm not sorry, you know, that's just that's just the phrase, I don't, you know, it's just the phrase, homemaker, all of that jazz. Um, actually, yeah, it was hard, but it was definitely a choice I made. My husband didn't tell me I had to do that. My God, 
I don't think he'd tell me how to do anything, to be fair. He's just not that kind of guy at all. He's incredibly kind, compassionate, egalitarian, um, gets with the flow. But the decision was I didn't want to leave the kids for huge amounts of time. So he says, well, I will, because we've got to pay the bills, right? Fast forward a few years, mine are teenagers now. A few years ago, I um, re-qualified and studied to be a sole midwife, which is providing um, support to people at end of life on an emotional and psychological level. I'm very much holding that space and, and being with them and accompanying them on their journey as far as we can. And I've done that for the last, I think it's three to four years, maybe four years now. And it's been incredibly um, rewarding and beautiful and privileged and intimate and given me such a beautiful perspective on life. But um, I've taken a break and the reason I've taken a break from it is because I start to feel sad a lot of the time. Um, I tried not to cry. And I started to feel sad a lot of the time because um, you know, you do care for people and you want to, you know, you, you do. We do care because we're human beings and we connect and that's what makes it work. So I realised that I was starting to feel sad a lot of the time. And also the irony was that I was spending um, a lot of time, which was a real privilege and I enjoyed looking after people at end of life. But actually, um, one of the things I noticed was that I didn't have anything left in the tank for when I got home. So I wasn't necessarily... Um, being the best version of who I could be as a mum and a wife and all of those other things. And it is really difficult balancing it all this. I don't think there's any easy way to say this. It is just really difficult. And I think it's just important to um, recognise what's important to you. So the summer was coming. We live in a very old cottage, which we're literally rebuilding from scratch. And we've got quite a lot of work going on. Um, so I decided I just needed to step back and, and kind of get some, um, just take a break, I think, just take a break. And, you know, I'm hugely menopausal. Um, and the big thing about being menopausal is my fatigue and my lack of energy. So here I am today. Um, it's been a beautiful day, but I am still in my nighty, um, uh, with my apron on, a <laughs> step forward. And this morning, I spent all morning out in the garden. I was meant to go for a swim because I hear all of this stuff about, you know, I need to keep my muscle tone because of osteoporosis. You know, it's really important to keep my cardiovascular fitness, exercise, it's good for your mental health. I then watch lots of stuff about all these different things I could be eating. And honestly, I'm just like rocking in the corner going, fucking out, I don't know where to start. So what today has consisted of is me pottering in the garden for two or three hours doing shitloads of washing because it's been raining for a couple of days. Um, there were five of us living at home. I have three teenage children. My son has just got back from his first um, big holiday with his mates. It was his 18th birthday present, which is quite a big deal for him. So you can imagine the amount of washing. Um, and by the time we got to two o'clock this afternoon, I was fucking knackered. So I actually had to hour nap. I call it meditation, but I'm napping. Um, I then I came up from the two hour nap and um, I read my book. I'm a big, big reader and I find that reading is hugely therapeutic and really helps me um, find some level of escapism because I don't know for anybody else in the menopause, but the sensory overload is really bad. So, um, okay, I can, I can binge on Bridgerton, let me tell you. But there's a lot of stuff that I just find too overwhelming and too engaging. So actually I found my no, I say this even as a kid, you know, I adored reading. I, you know, my mum would catch me sometimes, I'd be up all night reading in my bedroom. I've always adored reading. So um, I just spent a couple of hours reading, did some more washing, did some more pottering, cooked dinner for us all. It wasn't a massive deal. Um, I do try and really get stuck into cooking from scratch where I can. Um, I didn't cook from scratch, I did red Thai curry, but oh my God, the Marks and Sparks curry paste are really good some coconut milk in that bit of chicken fresh coriander it was superb and it took me about 15 minutes to prepare and the reason that I'm sharing all of this is I didn't go for a swim I didn't go for a walk I didn't do any yoga I didn't do any pilates didn't make myself too milk and whatever the fuck else smoothie I meant to make myself um didn't do a lot of things that were on my list didn't write um war and peace didn't do any meaningful posts or writing at all by the way i do like writing as you can probably tell i vlog and write quite a lot um didn't do any of that didn't do any of it 
Um, didn't even get dressed. Look, I'm in my nighty. Third time. I think that's the third time I've told you that, like I'm repeating myself. I asked my kids five or six times the same question and they just hold their head in their hands and just rock in the corner, really. But anyway, um, I didn't do any of that. And the whole point of this is to say it's okay. And actually, I have had the most lovely day. I have had the most lovely day just really keeping things simple just enjoying I, I don't want to leave my home I love my home I love I mean I'm sitting in my garden here I have a beautiful allotment behind me probably can't see it I have ducks and chickens I have five dogs you know it really is the good life we try and um you know make as much food as we can from what we're growing um my cottage is generally falling down and full of vintage finds my you know my days is like yesterday i had the most perfect day because there's a little charity shop up the road that i went to and i love vintage finds i love that whole kind of oldie worldy stuff and it just really hit me and i thought i need to share this because yeah the menopause there's lots of stuff that goes on in terms of yeah i absolutely have hrt i actually have hrt implants um uh, and lots of stuff that goes on around the biological and therapeutic side but some of it's just like it's okay you know, am I saying this to make myself feel better about today? I don't know. But I, I just know that I'm really at peace and I've had a lovely day. And I think that's okay. And we don't always have to be running around at a million miles an hour and being kind to ourselves. And actually tuning into what it is we really need is really fucking important. Maybe we don't get the time, the space, you know, the financial stability, lots of things. Maybe we don't get that until we're in the menopause. I don't know. So, um that's what I want to share, reality check. Don't worry about those 3,000 lists that you see on social media about stuff we're meant to do. Because I think that if our mind and heart feels at peace, I think the rest can follow, can follow, um, oh, brain fog, I've forgotten my word, can follow, can follow suit. And, um, and maybe just being in nature and being away from the madding crowd and being away from all of these demands and not putting ourselves into this military precision do 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 which honestly I did for years I did it for years since I could long as I can remember you know it was do 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 so productive so doing stuff and I just wonder I I most days no matter what time I get in I didn't get in yesterday till five and I still had to have a half an hour lay down and do you know what I say to myself this is all of those years of running around like a blow ass fly it takes a while to, to rest and recover your strength from that. So to any middle-aged women out there that are feeling that they're not rocking it, I think we are rocking it. We're just rocking it in a different way that people haven't quite got, um, quite got the gist of yet. So lots of love, hope that helps, take care.